This is the EcoSmart Tankless Electric Water Heater. This is the 27 kilowatt model. And today I decided to flush it. So these are just uh, some cheapy uh, washing machine hoses that I hooked up to the isolation valves. If you don't have isolation valves like this, sometimes they're called flush valves. Uh, this would be rather difficult to do. Obviously you would have to disconnect your mains, uh, your inlet, your outlet, hook it up there, which depending on your application could be a bit on the trickier side especially if you have uh, rigid lines or copper or something like that. Um, so that's of course why valves like this are recommended. Makes the job pretty simple. So I just hooked up the washing machine lines and I have one dumping off into the bucket. That is uh, the exit of the tankless unit. And then they have another line looping into this uh, pump over here. A lot of people typically use submersible pumps, but I didn't have one on hand. So this works just fine, of course. So the, um, of course, the pump takes white distilled vinegar out of this bucket, pumps it up. Right now it's running uh, the normal orientation, the normal direction that water would flow in service. Uh, so the pressure's coming in this red line here into the cold end, looping through and out the hot exit there. I initially ran this about 15 minutes reversed to switch the lines and um, a little bit of stuff seemed to come out. Nothing too exciting. This has been in service for about 11 months now. Um, and then I decided um, to flip it around so I could have this thing power up and uh, actually heat the vinegar uh, with, with it running through and flushing, which most people will probably wouldn't recommend, and I certainly wouldn't recommend, especially on a gas unit. But on a uh, tankless unit like this, an electric unit, as long as you're comfortable with the risks, um, which should be pretty minimal. I think it's, it's totally acceptable to get the uh, vinegar a little warmer to uh, hopefully make it do its job a little bit better. Um, I warmed it up to like 120 or something like that. Um, you can see it's kind of smoking a little bit. <laughs> it's not hot, but certainly warm. So anyways, I'll kick the pump on. Pump has a pretty good flow rate. Although I'm not terribly how critical that would be. I, I've seen a lot of people pump with uh, rather pathetic flow rates and I've seen a pretty really good results. So of course you can see with the uh, vinegar flowing in this direction, the flow the, the valve in the uh, proper direction, so it just moves on. I have it, of course, turned off right now. But, okay, man. Now we're up a little bit. Put it up to 160. Probably not recommending temperature. <laughs> Put that back down. Put it back off. Probably will have to run 30 minutes, 45 minutes in this direction. I wouldn't think uh, we get much better results running it all that much longer than that. Uh, I know a lot of people seem to recommend running it at least an hour. And that's probably a reasonable idea, especially uh, since most people probably wouldn't do this every year. And if you wait two years or three years, or even longer, uh, I would definitely wait at least an hour. Maybe two, even if it's uh, cold energy. I'm not seeing much, uh, much better results after 15 minutes. It doesn't seem like anything additional is happening. You know, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on with this colored bucket like that. But there's a little bit of sludge floating on the top, which actually is kind of surprising. Anyway, pretty simple job as long as you got the valves and the pump on hand. I only ended up using a gallon of vinegar, which, as you can see, it's not exactly uh, plentiful, but it's enough. Two gallons is probably a case for about how this depends on the bucket and the pump and the If you want a commercial pump, you probably want to run two or three gallons. I've seen people recommend four or five gallons even. But I don't see any other problem getting done with this one. 